Okay, so welcome back to this next video on positron emission tomography. So we have seen how uh, we can have this uh, radial isotope of fluorine which undergoes positron emission decay. Um, so when it radioactively decays, it emits a positron. And we've seen how this positron, when it hits its antimatter particle, which is the electron, so I'll just label this as an electron, um, and what happens is that they annihilate each other and you get two photons being emitted at, at exactly opposite directions, basically. Right, okay, so how can we use this to our advantage in the uh, positron emission tomography? Right, so what we can do is we can create uh, positron emission tomography probes, uh, radioactive probes. And one of the probes that we can use, because what we need to do is we need to somehow get this radioisotope into our, per, into our human being that we want to scan. And we want it to be attached to a useful molecule that shows us something useful. So one of the, things, one of the very common things that it's attached to is glucose. Because um, if we attach it to glucose, glucose will go where uh, tissues are metabolically active in the body. So you'll get an accumulation of this radioactive isotope in metabolically active tissues. This will decay and release positrons, and then the positrons will hit electrons, and you'll get gamma rays being given off. We can detect the gamma rays, and uh, from that we can get an idea of which portions of the body are most metabolically active, and that's very useful information. Okay, so let's go over that in more detail. Right, so the way in which we attach it to uh, glucose is for a molecule, a molecule known as fluorodeoxyglucose. Fluorodeoxyglucose. Right, and I'll show you the structure of fluorodeoxyglucose. So if you show, first thing I'll show you what the structure of normal glucose is, and then I'll show you how we've modified it to create fluorodeoxyglucose. So the normal structure of glucose is that it's a six-membered ring uh, with one oxygen up there. So you have, other than that, you have carbon. So you have this six-membered ring like so. And then you have a final carbon coming off here. Right, off every carbon you have, well, not quite every carbon, but off most of the carbons you have hydroxyl groups coming off. So you have a hydroxyl group coming off there, a hydroxyl group coming off this carbon, and a hydrogen. Then another hydroxyl group coming off here, and a hydrogen, and a hydroxyl group coming off here, and a hydrogen. A hydrogen coming off there, you don't have a hydroxyl group coming off that carbon. And then off this final sixth carbon, you have a hydroxyl group, a hydrogen, and another hydrogen. Okay, so that's the structure of glucose, roughly. Right, so this is glucose. Now, how do we modify it in order to create fluorodeoxyglucose? So basically, what we do to create fluorodeoxyglucose is we remove this hydroxyl group here and replace it with a fluorine atom. So we take this off. This hydroxyl group comes off. I'll get my highlighters. This hydroxyl group here is removed, and we replace it with a fluorine atom. So fluorine only needs one bond, so it will bind to that carbon, and uh, then it will be um, it will be it will be saturated. Uh, okay, so that is fluorodeoxyglucose. So the reason it's not just called fluoroglucose is that you've got fluorodeoxyglucose. You have removed this hydroxyl group which has that oxygen. So that's why it's defluorodeoxyglucose because you've removed an oxygen and you've put on a fluoro group. Right, so fluorodeoxyglucose. Okay, now, uh, it's often abbreviated to FDG, fluorodeoxyglucose. Now, we can put in here our radioactive isotope of fluorine. So rather than putting in fluorine 19, we can put in fluorine 18. Then what we create is 18F fluorodeoxyglucose. Okay, so we have labelled our fluorodeoxyglucose with our radioisotope of uh, fluorine, basically. Okay, so 18F fluorodeoxyglucose, or of course you could just denote that 18F uh, FDG. Right, okay, so what we now do is we inject in this 18FDG into the person which we suspect has a cancerous tumour which we want to check. 
Okay, so we, sus we suspect that our patient has cancer, and we want to try and find the tumour. So uh, maybe, maybe they've got a lymphoma or lung cancer or many other forms of cancer. What we do is we inject in this 18F fluorodeoxyglucose. That goes into the bloodstream, and then where you have metabolically active tissue, so let's say here we have the tumour, Tumours are extremely metabolically active tissue. Now, it won't just be tumours that take up the 18 FDG, but any tissue that's metabolically active is going to be taking up glucose, basically. So, um, let's say this is a cell of the tumour rather than the whole tumour. Basically, if the cell is very metabolically active, which tumour cancerous cells are very metabolically active, they're going, it's going to be taking up normal glucose from the blood. Okay, so it's going to be taking up a lot of glucose from the blood. And basically, it can't tell the difference. Well, the transporters that are absorbing the glucose through the cell membrane can't tell the difference between glucose and 18F fluorodeoxyglucose. So what happens is these cells take up the 18F fluorodeoxyglucose. Now, let's go on to the other side and discuss further. What usually happens to glucose when it's been taken up by a metabolically active cell? Well, what usually happens is that glucose is converted into uh, glucose 6-phosphate uh, by the first enzymes of glycolysis. So it's converted into glucose 6-phosphate. And what that involves is, if I uh, show you on the other side, that involves, um, that involves adding a phosphate group onto this sixth hydroxyl group up here. So basically you take a phosphate group, which is a group like uh, this, and you add that on to that hydroxyl group bound to the sixth carbon. So you're going to create a bond between this hydroxyl group and this hydroxyl group. So you're going to uh, take off a hydroxyl group and a hydrogen, and then you're going to bind this oxygen to the phosphate group to get glucose 6-phosphate. Now, basically, uh, when at the end, well, first let me just tell you about the enzyme that does this. Now, there are two enzymes which can do this, and they're expressed in different tissues. So hexokinase is a is a enzyme which is expressed often in skeletal muscle and uh, catalyzes this uh, reaction of adding a phosphate group onto the sixth carbon of glucose. But there's another enzyme that's expressed in uh, liver cells, which is glucokinase. And I think glucokinase may often be expressed in tumorous cells as well, cancerous cells, because hexokinase very quickly saturates, whereas glucokinase doesn't saturate. Anyway, one of these two enzymes is uh, catalyzing the conversion of glucose into glucose 6-phosphate. And basically, these enzymes do the same thing to fluorodeoxyglucose. So let's have our molecule of 18F fluorodeoxyglucose here. So fluorodeoxyglucose. And basically, they are going to add a phosphate group onto the 6th. Uh, carbon of 18F fluorodeoxyglucose, just as though it was a normal glucose molecule. So they're going to create 18F, and I won't write the full molecule out again, I'll just put FDG, fluorodeoxyglucose 6-phosphate. Right, so they convert it into this molecule, and basically, normally, for normal glucose, glucose 6-phosphate can then go down the rest of the respiratory pathway, so it goes down respiration. But, uh, 18F uh, fluorodeoxyglucose 6-phosphate cannot go down respiration, so this process does not occur. That does not happen. Put a big cross through that arrow. Um, so basically, this molecule gets trapped within your cell. So you, if this is your cancerous cell, you've taken up 18F, 18F fluorodeoxyglucose here into the cell. You've converted it into... 18F uh, FDG 6-phosphate, uh, fluorodeoxyglucose 6-phosphate, this molecule here, and it just gets trapped in there. The cell can't get rid of it, so it builds up lots and lots of this molecule within its cytoplasm. Now, this molecule has the radioisotope of fluorine attached to it. It has 80, flora, fluorine 18 attached to it. And the fluorine 18 is going to decay and release positrons. And that's going and basically that's going to lead to 
um, annihilation of the positrons with electrons, and that will release uh, gamma photons, which we can detect, and that will tell us which portions of the body are very metabolically active and have a lot of this 18F FDG6 phosphate in them. Okay, and we'll continue the story in the next video.